name's Adam Brin. I'm the Director of Technology at the Center for Digital Antiquity based at Arizona State University. Can everybody hear me? I tend to have a quiet voice and I can't exactly tell where the microphone is. It's on. Um, so I am a consultant on the SCOPE project, which is a collaboration between the University of Illinois, uh, Washington State University, and Arizona State University. Uh, SCOPE is aimed at trying to address some of the large complex questions in archaeology, specifically dealing with issues around the paleo environment, trying to get information about why things failed, why things succeeded, what the environmental and other issues around that are, not by solving the specific problems, but by trying to develop an environment that might allow any researcher to start to access this information and use it. So what we know is obviously the past environment is not exactly the same as the present. Uh, many of the data that are available on the past environment can be complex to access. It may be spread along many different sites, many different samples, it may be embedded in massive files that may be hard to use, hard to access, and hard to find. They are definitely not in a democratized state where an archaeologist at the beginning of their course of study or at the very end of their course of study may have access or the ability to use it or the data at any moment. What we do need, though, is a system and environment to provide core reusable research um, to allow people to access this environmental and paleo-environmental and climate information and to provide ways in which people can use it in a better way. SCOPE includes a set of data scientists, archaeologists, computer scientists, and researchers who are attempting to do this specific thing. SCOPE itself is a four-pronged approach. It tries to find and collate existing climate and paleoclimate data <coughs> into a single repository. It tries to create a reproducible research environment for people to actually use and access that information. It funds and includes provenance tools to allow you to better understand how the models that have been created are developed and managed and work so that you as a, maybe a layperson, maybe a modeler, maybe a scientist can actually understand and make sure that it is working the way that you would expect. It then also provides discovery and visualization tools on top. The current scope project is based on a prototype that we helped develop in the last couple of years. The last, the prototype took Kyle Bosinski's paleocar model and developed a data set around the four corners in the United States. It then modeled back 2,000 years worth of data uh, along three or four different variables and try to put that in front of a bunch of archaeologists, social scientists, climate scientists, and other researchers in order to get a better understanding of what exactly was necessary in order to do something more with it. What is it that they wanted? What is the data that they wanted out of it? What were the questions that they were asking? And from that, what could we extract into a more generic system, something that wasn't just a single website with a single model and a single data source in order to answer and address the questions. The interface you can see here, um, which may be unfortunately a little bit blurry, allows you to zoom in and select a point, um, choose, choose and change the opacity, and through the slider at the bottom, <coughs> change the year, or play an animation that would allow you to see the progression and change of precipitation or another variable over that time. When you as a user decide that you want more information about a specific point or a specific area, you could click on that point and you would end up with the graphs on the side showing precipitation, growing degree days, and other information that come out of the paleocar model. You could then take that information and download it. Uh, 
Specifically, also, however, in the in the timeline at the top, you could specify the exact date ranges that you might be interested in, so that you don't have to look at the last 2,000 years, but you could look at very specific time periods and get more information. From all of this, and from the interviews, we started to develop what would be the scope interface, and some of the questions around it, our concept of what our users are and what our users would want. From talking to these users, we broke them down into about into three separate buckets. The general researcher, who might be somebody starting out or somebody who's less used to dealing with modeling or large data technologies, who just wants to find a model, wants to visualize it and export the data so that they can take it on with their own research project and just continue on. The tinkerer who builds on this has a few more questions about the data they may have a little bit more localized knowledge about what that data is and how that data works, or specifically about their region, where they've got theories that they want to test about maybe they think that the temperature is a little bit warmer or colder, depending on what that model is, or that there was more reuse or some other information, as the models will be very different. And so allowing them to take the existing model and tinker with a variable and rerun it for a specific area or a much larger one. And then lastly, the modelers who can actually develop the models, put them into the tool, and allow others to use them. Scope itself, because it is also a data discovery tool, has three different types of data. Facilitated access, that is taking things like PRISM and the National Elevation Data Set, hydrology, or even DINA, some data out of open context, and putting it into a single system that people can find and discover. Not to supplant the existing systems, but to make sure that uh, for us, our types of users, that they can go to one place and find it. Um, to take user-contributed models that are published, currently we're using models that are in the NOAA paleoclimatology database and put them into the tool, annotate it. And then sponsored models like Paleocar or a few others that I'll um, breeze by in the next couple of slides where we are providing and creating new models or funding the creation of the models to put into the system, both to test and expand so that we know that we are serving the right needs, but also to make sure that that information is available to our users. So why, why facilitate this access? Um, I think I touched on many of these issues already, but in talking to our users, there is this need for, I want to search, click, download. Not having to find the large data set, pull it into a, a GIS system or another large system or an, some other tool, extract out the small area that I care about instead of the continental United States, getting a small region, um, and then working with it, um, but getting a single point of entry or discovery in a consistent interface so that they can work with their information. So what some of the data that we're facilitating include data from PRISM, the blended drought atlas, national elevation data sets, etc. On top of this, we're taking specific models which we are looking at, um, specifically dealing with pollen, dealing with uh, other environmental information, and trying to pull that in as well. We're also funding the extraction and uh, the updating of a bunch of tree ring data that can be used as on top of this. The system itself is built to be, op and is open source. Um, it uses Docker containers to both run the models as well as run the entire system. The idea being the models may not change over time, the system and the environment may not change over time, and in order to make sure that it is reproducible, each model is in a container, the system is in a container, and so we can maintain all of the existing infrastructure. On top of that, we include an internal data caching system for things like 
uh, Neotoma or even uh, Open Context to make sure that we're being good network citizens, but as well and enabling further reproducibility by making sure that the data can stay consistent where it needs to be. A broader sort of map of what the infrastructure looks like, you can see at the top the various data sources that are included, um, the containers in Docker that will be integrated, um, the various components of the interface. Can I, uh, yeah, that works. Um, and then building down, some of the other, other pieces. The idea being, as the infrastructure is built out, that we can uh, both run these systems both on the NCSA supercomputer environment, but they could be run in the cloud in other environments or even on the local machine. One of the other aspects of the tool is the concept of provenance both prospective provenance, capturing the generic workflow, which I'll get into, and the retrospective provenance of exactly what happened. Prospective provenance allows for the, using the Yes Workflow Markup tool, um, both funded by Scope, but also an external project. Um, yes Workflow basically allows uh, a modeler to add small annotations, um, you can see here, uh, within a script, and those annotations allow you to explain what's going on in that script. Taking those another step further, you start to get the process diagram to something like Paleo Car, uh, where you start to run the web app, it goes out and extracts data, and each step with the appropriate amount of information allows for you understanding exactly what the script is doing and making sure that you can follow the logic. Mm -hmm. Understanding this can make complex scripts much more acceptable, right? accessible. The more that, however, you focus on specific areas, you can then jump into a more detailed workflow. Um, and so you can have these nesting of various components. Besides Yes Workflow, uh, Kyle's <coughs> data has also been funded by this project, which allows for the federation of a lot of information through the access of a couple of our scripts in our, in our library. The platform itself is designed as follows. A simple search interface on the left, allowing you to search and filter on various information, variables uh, in the data that you might want to look for, the status of whether it's published or not, allow you also to create or focus on an area of interest or a specific time span. On the right, you end up with various cards which show the, either the models or the data that has been aggregated um, for which you have little iconography about more information, providing metadata, ability to download the data if it's available, uh, and then view on, view on the map, um, whether there is a yes workflow diagram or whether there uh, is the ability to tinker with the model. We also will allow for login and notifications so that as you start to run your own models, you'll be able to see <coughs> that information as well. Clicking on a specific model will allow you to see the details, the citation of the information, um, as well as the ability to navigate to where in the, the model, uh, where in the US or where in the world it is, um, allow you to specifically choose various variables that you want to look at, specify opacity, very similar to the original prototype, but in a much more generic form, um, such that it can be used across various data sets. Once you've selected an area of interest, you'll then be able to, again, get more information, seeing the exact results of the data, um, as well as download the visualization, um, the metadata. And unlike the prototype, one of the things that we've seen requests for is the ability to select a region as opposed to a single point, and to be able to see uh, the aggregate average or other information on top of that. 
for tinkerers, you'll be able to, or for models that allow for tinkering, specific variables, etc., um, you'll be allowed to specify uh, the variables that you want to change, name them, and then it will run a specific region on the system and allow you to get more information um, based on your adjustments. Um, if you wanted to run the full model or the full extent of the model, you'll then be able to uh, uh, do that at instead of it being immediate, but over a, a, a specific period of time when the system's less busy. So um, coming to the future, one of the things that we've talked about is the ability to chain models, to basically take one model and use it as the input of another, um, as uh, I think Kyle does in some of his uh, calculations of the Masonich and other information. Um, we'll also be completing the tinkering model and provide new models and data sets uh, over time. Uh, scope itself, uh, the website is openscope.org. Uh, the prototype in, or the, the current beta will be uh, released at uh, the SAA conference. <coughs> this is a bit of a preview. Um, and if uh, there are any questions, I'm happy to take them now. Um, though, please hesitate from asking me about models specifically as that's not my area of expertise. <laughs> <laughs>